I would love to hear from you though in the chat before I start talking about short form videos and how it could increase your followers. Are you already using short form videos? Are you recording it? And what is your number one challenge? If you can drop me in the chat this so I can kind of come back to your questions or feedback and I'll kind of insert some of the examples uh, in here. Now let's go back to the beginning, just like everything we do in the rise of social videos. I'm not gonna give you a boring history of this, uh, but in essence, why short videos are so popular. You know, they are attention grabbing because uh, they're, they're quite short. And sorry, I'm stuttering here because my screen is uh, overlapping. George, can you hear me okay? It's, uh, my, screen, my screen flickered. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, cool. So, all right, here we go. I think I got my screen back. Sorry, you guys, it's a little technical difficulty here. All right, so why short form videos are so popular? One, they are attention grabbing because they're so short. We have the attention span of a goldfish, I believe a little bit less than that. And uh, it's funny because sometimes as I walk my dog in the morning and I feel like he can only pay attention for like three seconds. And then I meet a neighbor and I talk to the neighbor and the neighbor have the attention span of about three to five seconds. So I'm like, I think we're really getting closer to an animal, uh, primitive animal lifespan here or short uh, attention span, sorry. That's why we like it. They are also, they deliver a message very quick. So people want to get value as fast as possible and short form videos allow you to do that. They provide engaging and immersive experience in only a few seconds. So that comes back to also delivering the message. But the problem arises from this because most of us have, you know, a lot to explain. And now we face the challenge of getting there as quickly as possible meaning delivering the message as quickly as possible. It's also very cost-effective. I'm gonna show you some examples of some big some big brands are actually, you know, ditching TV commercials altogether and, you know, relying on social media views, saving them hundreds of millions of dollars a year on advertising, which is insane. <clears throat> so this is kind of the why in the beginning. And of course, brand awareness. People looking you up, and I can guarantee you this from patterns, 70% to 80% of the research is done before people come to you. And a big part of that research is your online social media presence. What kind of posts you're providing? Are you consistently posting? Do you even have a social media presence? And what are those social media channels? And believe me, these are very important metrics when you're building your business and your brand to consider because you need to reverse engineer how people find you and how they analyze your business. And this is a huge part of it. So short form videos is a quick way to get views, which means your videos will get engagement, you will eventually build followers, and that on its own will give you some sort of, let's just call it social stock, okay? <clears throat> All right, so many of you have already started, and I have Dre said that he just started exploring short form videos. That's awesome. Definitely need to start somewhere, you guys, if you haven't started. Some people, like Chaplin, he used repurpose.io to take long form content and break it down into short form. There are tools that take recordings just like this one and, you know, using AI, I guess, cuts it up into one minute videos or short form videos. And by the way, I'm gonna cover the limitations of each channel in a second. I have Leland is using AI to create shorts. Yes, Leland, that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. It saves time, it takes long form videos and finds the segments that are like a nugget, if you wanna call it, a value nugget and breaks it down, adds caption, uh, quite efficient. You can share the name of the tools, you guys. I don't mind a little cross promotion here. Because I know some of these tools can be a life savior for many of you. All right, so only three. Only three of you guys have 57 on here. Actually, 64 just on the Zoom using uh, or launching short-form videos. I would expect it a little bit more. All right. Yeah, Carla is using short-form videos. Yes, yes. Cool. Riverside for shorts. 
That's great, Eric. Riverside is a great tool. People are using it. I think Riverside FM for recording uh, podcasts and I think doing even live webinars at some point, uh, some point live uh, live streaming. And it has built in tool. I've, even Spotify, they had their own recording studio and now they ditched that and I think they integrated with Riverside FM, uh, which I believe that's a vouching for the product. All right, Opus Clips, Leland said. That's a great way also. Carla has 2.5 million views on a recent trio, which is why I'm here to learn how to better capture leads. Well, Carla, you did something right. Why don't you just share the link to that video and I'm gonna share it with with, with the people joining us. Let's just kind of analyze it after I finish some of my uh, my slides here. This is great. So I do believe most of you, to some capacity have been experimenting and this is the first step into getting into short form videos. All right, a lot of good content today, guys. I'm loving the engagement. <clears throat> so why short form videos are popular? Continue slide two, now in numbers. YouTube shorts have over 30 billion views a day and 1.5 billion monthly active users. I mean, can you imagine 30 billion views per day? This is how many emails get sent on a daily basis and include spam. I mean, this is an insane number, right? You want to squeeze yourself in there. And trust me, if you feel like you don't have an audience, you don't know who your audience is, sometimes you can validate ideas can validate thoughts, you can validate products by leveraging that 30 billion views. But that's a different conversation. 91% of Instagram users report watching videos weekly. And I think this is probably um, a low number. I believe every single one of you today have to some capacity consumed at least one video that scrolled on social media from the moment they woke up until right now, they definitely have consumed some sort of a video somewhere, at least. And because these tools are so darn smart, designed by the smartest people in the industry, they know exactly how to get us. We, we stand no chance, zero chance, like Tim Ferriss said. He deleted his profiles because he's like, I can't even keep up. The moment I go on these channels, I'm just pulled and sucked into a maze of about 30 or 45 minutes of my time. Anyways. So that's another stat for you. 91% of Instagram users report watching videos weekly. We have short form videos have exceeded from the ad revenue that is just by creating ads and short form videos across channels, $10 billion, it's a growing industry. And the reason we included this in here is because there are companies focused on creating short form videos just for ads. That's it, because that industry is growing. Now, when it comes to businesses, 56% of videos published by businesses today are less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. That means you and I, we have the opportunity or we have actually, uh, we must, we have the duty to deliver our message and our product and services and the value to our ICP in less than two minutes. That's a challenge. It's a big challenge. And when you start doing short form videos, you realize you build the habit of delivering the value as quickly as possible. And that's just the nature of, of how things are. Now, of course, TikTok is not the only short form videos that is popular, but they are very popular among Gen Z, while Instagram is among millennials, uh, still more appealing, okay? So these are some of the channels you guys I have some, some of you dropped in more comments here. Eric said he does webinar in shorts. Yes, Eric. And honestly, taking long form webinars like this, breaking it down to shorts, that's the best way to repurpose content. I do advise it. <clears throat> uh, Sihan said we're using videos from time to time for some tips and recommendation. Absolutely. And Carla have shared her video. So let me just copy that and I'm gonna come back to it after I go through my slides. So that's way we can analyze some of the best practices in Carla's video. All right, John said most creators stop after they made 10. Yeah, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. If you have started your video production, don't get discouraged. One view is more than zero views. Just put it that way. 100 views 
is better than 99. And I'm just saying this because in the beginning, I was discouraged. And I just then it wasn't getting the views that I want. And I realized it's not about the views necessarily. It's about the right kind of people viewing your, your content. And there's some you know, best practices to get there, and I'll cover these in a minute. Um, but guys, don't get discouraged just because you published 10 videos and you felt discouraged, not enough viewers there. All right. Everybody starts with one view, absolutely. So let's break down some of the channel's limitations and what you need to know. Now, do you have to memorize this? Probably not. But if you're a business or an agency working with clients, or maybe you're the marketing manager at your company, there's certainly you know, some things you need to keep in mind. So let's start with Instagram limitations and requirements for videos. One, Instagram reel is up to 90 seconds, okay? Now, I don't know if many of you have noticed a difference in engagement when pushing 30 seconds versus 60 versus 90, which are the three settings that they provide. And maybe they provide them for a reason, but um, 90 seconds is your cap. So that's even less than two minutes of value. IG stories, on the other hand, are capped at 60 seconds. Many of us, they create Instagram reels, then we push them as a story. And if it's 90, it gets cut off. It happens to me all the time. I have a longer 10 minutes video, <laughs> which is not, it's a long form video, actual post. I cannot push it as a story or it cuts it up. It creates just a, a picture of it. So understanding kind of how Instagram Reel works, which is open to everyone, your settings can dictate that. Your stories will be available to your followers in up to 60 seconds. So some people just to kind of have the maximum of cross promotion, they cap things at 60 seconds. More of a challenge, right? All right, so the video ads on Instagram is up to 120 seconds. So obviously they wanna give you a little more time, Many companies that struggle with just one minute, so they opened up an extra minute for advertisement. Um, anyway, so in terms of what we're talking about, and the majority of the stuff we're talking about today is short form videos, which is shown in portrait, exactly like you see here, okay? I'm not talking about landscape, the traditional YouTube or traditional uh, post on Instagram. These are actually just portrait size. And the ideal cover photo, cover photos are very important. We're going to have a slide on that. Is 1080 by 1920 with the aspect ratio 916. All right. Do I expect to memorize this? No, I don't even memorize them myself. Things are already built in quite conveniently in some tools like Canva to design these things. And even on your phone, I have all these video apps with the presettings already in place. They say you want to do Instagram or you want it for others. But overall... 916 seems to be across the board the size that you should be focused on. Okay. Awesome. George, quick check. Any comments or questions on Facebook? No, Richard. Uh, on Facebook, it's fine. Okay. Uh, here, Tony just asked about the tool where we can. Uh, create short videos. So I uh, answered with repurpose.io that uh, was shared by uh, by Chaplin. Chaplin. Chaplin yes, yeah. repurpose.io. Yeah. And, and there are a few others that others dropped as well for taking long form videos. I think uh, Opus is one of them. And um, yes, put in the Opus Bidly link. I'm, I might have some referrals for Leland, which is a nice kickback for referring the product. I've tried it. Actually, it's pretty good. I can vouch for Opus. It's one of the top um, AI auto generations. Okay. Let's talk about Facebook and their uh, limitations as well. 60 seconds for real, um, except from 60 to 90. I don't know how recent that happened, but obviously, you know, following what's available on Instagram. And you can cross post from Instagram to Facebook. So it didn't make sense for them to just keep it at 60, I believe. Their stories video length of 26 seconds. I haven't really posted extensively on my stories, but I always take my reels 
or my videos and repost them as stories. And they just have like a little snapshot on my thumbnail, which is why thumbnails are important. Facebook ads give you 240 seconds. So, you know, four minutes. And, you know, that, that's why sometimes it's scrolling Facebook and you see like a, a long interview and it turns out to be an ad. It's because they're allowing up to four minutes. The video mode is portrait. And the ideal cover photo for reels is 1080 by 1920. So kind of same aspect ratio as Instagram. Okay. And by the way, we're going to give you this presentation. So if you want to repurpose it to create your own content for your blogs and such, don't worry, you'll have the content here. All right, TikTok, the one that started it all. And I still remember, I forgot how, how long ago, 10 years ago? When did TikTok start, you guys? Anyone 2016, maybe? 2016. 2016. I, and I just, I was looking at the app and all I see is just people dancing and memes. And I'm like, this is really going to be a thing, isn't it? <laughs> and um, and then the water bucket challenge and all these things that just started to kind of fall off short form videos and trending stuff. Anyways, they extended from three minutes to 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And by the way, if you try to upload 10 minutes worth of video to TikTok, they actually tell you to break it down to shorter videos because they know 10 minutes is way too long and they want the number of videos to go up. So now they're saying, you have 10 minutes, you can, but we recommend you break it down into one minute videos um, or shorter videos. So they have like a little tool in their creator studio that lets you break down 10 minutes into smaller videos. And they have like one of four, one of, you know, two of four kind of, so people can understand who, when watching that video, that it's part of a series, okay? And believe me, when somebody goes from video one to video two, that's an amazing level of engagement. So that they take those signals as well as a way to boost your video and recommend it to other channels as well. <clears throat> yes, Leland, I have um, TikTok shops are blowing up. Absolutely, TikTok shops, you guys, this is, you know, live commerce is a thing. Live commerce started, I think, primarily in China. It was huge. People are, you know, doing these live videos and you can buy right there and then from the live video. And now it's been blowing up in the United States and in Europe. So people can literally just watch you talk. Like now, I can sell you on my, I don't know, pen. And you can buy it directly without leaving the interface. I mean, this is huge. So if you are selling a physical product, I believe experimenting with TikTok shops is, is important. Um, Anna, thank you. So TikTok started in 2016 <laughs> and and picked up steam in the United States in 2018. Wow. Time flies. Time flies. And Facebook has been there, you know, for 10 years prior and they didn't pick up on this trend. <clears throat> All right. Sihan, you're right. Now everybody can have their own HSN and QVC <laughs> just running live. You know, those la late night sort of shows that you, you're you buying like a knife that cuts uh, cuts a horse I mean, if, or a penny or whatever it is. <laughs> Nonsense. Um, and I see them a lot as I'm sometimes scrolling. I get like people selling rocks, uh, selling um, just wigs, eggs, um, weapons, weapons like knives, like historic knives. It's just crazy, crazy the stuff that they they sell. All right, so shorter videos start 15 seconds to 60. So you don't want to do, I mean, less than 15 seconds. It's just might be way too short. Um, however, Carla said that hers was very short. So I want to I want to see that video very soon. TikTok video ad length, also five to 60. So they capped it at 60. Hopefully we're not wrong on this, George. Uh, but you have one minute to deliver your value in their ads. So they, they sort of capped it. Yes. They don't want people to consume time on ads. And that was a good call. Um, and also portraits. We're talking about the same format. Now, the, the kind of uh, cover is 1080 by 1920, 916 again. So here you go. You're producing one video. You don't have to worry about formats across different devices. All right. All right, let's continue. YouTube Shorts, guys, YouTube Shorts can be amazing. 
the YouTube app itself, when you upload a video, like for example, this one, they have a built-in option on your phone. It's not available on desktop that lets you create a short directly from that video. So you don't have to cut it up separately and upload it. All you need to do is just click on create short. And from uh, that button, you choose the segment you want and you continue. So I literally, when I upload my small podcast I have on AI, which is like 10 to 12 minute segments, I go into YouTube and I start getting down into shorts and every short gets me, you know, 100 views, sometimes more, sometimes less. And they lead back to the main original video, okay? Knowing these small things will help you drive more engagement to your YouTube shorts. Um, all right, so 15 to 60 seconds. That's the only thing that I don't like about YouTube is that they're, they're always capped at 60. Uh, this is, by the way, this is 60 seconds, not minutes. I don't know if we're making the mistake here. Um, apologies, guys. This is just a little typo. This is 15 seconds, not not minutes. Um, seconds. Yes, seconds. Sorry. YouTube shorts ads range 15 to 60 seconds. And the mode is portrait landscape of a square, which is kind of their format across different devices and sometimes on the right feed, sometimes on the top. So they have mastered the formats of videos. The ideal cover is also 9 to 16, just 1080 by 920, 1920. Um, but they take horizontal and 1080 per square. This this slide is all full of <laughs> typos. Sorry guys about this. I, I should have proofed it. Um, so these are some of your basic stuff. I guess what you need to focus on is we're shooting in portrait mode, meaning you know the phone is that way. And the aspect ratio is the same, nine to 16. And now we're gonna talk about tips and best practices. All right. <clears throat> So Anna's asking, can we set up multiple TikToks through our, our system without ever getting on TikTok? So Anna, yes, you can schedule TikToks, videos on VBout and we can push them on the day and time. The only thing that they don't offer in their API uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, they didn't have an API endpoint for the cover photo. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube allow us to upload cover photos from VBout. TikTok, not yet. Hopefully soon they'll change that, okay? Cool. All right, so let's talk about videos and I'm gonna kind of share some examples here in portrait mode, all right? See, these are some of the, be again, best practices. That's what we're at right now. So short form video platforms are designated for content for the shown vertically, particularly is designed for mobile experience. That's, that's really the gist of it. Even though they're pushing on, desktop apps, you know, and as you're scrolling through YouTube, now they have like a little horizontal scroll for shorts. If you're doing it on Instagram, you can see sort of like suggestions and reels and have a tab for that. But primarily it was designed for mobile. <clears throat> it takes the entire screen. So it's an immersive experience in a way. And by the way, if any of you have like, uh, virtual reality goggles. You can literally immerse yourself with the virtual reality Instagram app. Uh, it's it's quite nice, but it sucks up a lot of your time. It's like everything else. And videos in landscape make it more smaller and more difficult to watch, which may lead to decrease in engagement. And sometimes it happens to me like this video is taken in portrait. Um, I'm sorry, landscape. When we cut it up, I have two options. Either zoom in on my face, okay, or cut up size of the screen. So I need to make sure the content is right in the center, or I need to zoom out and show the entire frame, which adds to the top and the bottom a little of, of the black screen. So knowing exactly how your product or how your recording is gonna be cross promoted is going to help. Um, so that video, if I wanted to post it as a traditional YouTube, for instance, or a traditional post on Instagram is gonna have on the left and the right of it, like a little black <clears throat> space. It's a trick to be able to cross publish them, but uh, it's doable. <clears throat> Videos in landscape mode, 
make it smaller and more difficult to watch. I've said that. Sorry for repeating it. So this is a an example. I mean, I understand many of you are already well versed on this, but let me just pull it up. Um, all right, let's see where we got right here. So this is the video we're on. And something special. That's all you need. You only need five shoes in your rotation. Something for every day, something skinny, something dressy, something chunky, and something special. That's all you need. You only need five. All right, so technically it just took the entire screen. It was designed specifically to be a reel. It's very short. You can see the caption as well because some people scroll without voice or, uh, sorry, audio. And by default, the audio is off. So that's why caption is quite uh, important. And we're gonna talk about that. All right, moving on. So obviously making your video catchy. We always say this, we talk about this. It's hard, it's an art. It's something that you only will get to once you have done it so many times. <clears throat> but how do you do this is the question. So it, to get people attention is really what it is. You might want to deploy some pattern interruption on social media, um, on, on videos. So what is the pattern interruption? It could be the way that you open, which is probably the most important part, the first three seconds. Uh, this is why opening by saying, hi, my name is probably not the best idea. Uh, you know, start with the value immediately. Okay, don't postpone. And sometimes it's when everybody's speaking and as you scroll, you notice the patterns are the same, just people talking. But then you'll have a video of somebody is scroll strolling on, I don't know, just uh, like a downhill and they're skiing. Then it's a slightly different pattern and your brain is just wired that way. Oh, it's a new pattern. Let me just invest a little bit more time in it. So think about that. I'm not saying to jump off plane with a parachute and take a reel. Let's be realistic, but uh, it's um, you're certainly thinking about different patterns here. Instead of showing the same view throughout the entire video, do cuts and transitions. You know, you don't want to be in the same exact angle all the time. And it's sometimes hard. If you're recording, you know, like video tutorials, there's nothing you can do besides changing the screens and just making it more interactive. But if you're shooting the video yourself, you might want to introduce some random parts of, to the video. And you've watched these where sometimes you're watching something and it's full of stock B-rolls. It does not have to be something necessarily related 100% to what you're talking about, but just introducing new elements to your video can enhance the video experience. So you can take a video of yourself, finish that up, then take shorter videos of just random things around you and then just add them together with the audio intact, of course, okay? So instead of um, you know showing the same video, cut it up. Now, I'm not sure if using mm, mm, ah and pauses, or I, I'm, I'm all with pauses. So pausing during your videos, short form videos could be helpful. Uh, the use of mm and ah could also provide a transition only it's in very short videos. So I'm not in total agreement on this. We just read it online and we're talking about it that they recommend using mm, ah, and pauses. I am with the pauses, but not necessarily with those little filler words, as they call them. And there are tools out there, by the way, that remove those filler words for you if you want to kind of cut them up. So change the camera angle. Sometimes people have one camera and the only way you can do is zoom in and zoom out of your face. So you might cut your video and then in one segment, zoom in, in one segment, zoom out. Now, if you have the luxury to have two cameras working at the same time, that's even better. It could be from the side and then from the left, but that requires a little bit more of advanced production. I'm not here to advocate people just going out investing thousands of dollars on, on equipments. Um, but if you have a phone and you have a computer and you can activate both, I think that would be good. The only thing that you need to know is learn how to use the tools that toggle between those two cameras, okay? <clears throat> All right, so these are some very basic suggestions to making your video slightly more catchy, ca uh, catchy, sorry, um, by using pattern interruptions, by uh, 
introducing B-rolls that you can take yourself or you can purchase online, I guess. Pause in your video so people can follow. You don't have to be just in one monotone and tonality is very important. Changing the camera angle can help as well. Providing a little bit of higher value production, production value and changing the background uh, to surprise viewers. And uh, I mean, you've seen these, I'm, 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 I don't like reality shows at all because I feel like they're, they're waste. But last time I was somewhere and somebody was watching Dubai Bling and every second, the same person in the background, they're changing their outfit. I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is a little different. You know, it, it makes you pay attention to the next kind of outfit. So if you want to use that as an angle to your production, um, by all means, it could be your own personality if you like it. All right. Any feedback so far on this to make your video catchy? Would you like to add anything to this? All right. We have Sihan said there's a, right now a great app with lifetime deal. Correct and go. Okay. Uh, with multiple cameras. Yeah, there are some apps that support multiple cameras. I'm a little bit kind of old school. I've been using um, OBS for recording locally, but if you're doing it on the go, there are definitely apps for that. Thank you for sharing. All right, storytelling. I talked about this a lot. This is actually the Pixar framework. And, you know, the storytelling process usually works like this, at least the one that works. Now, there's not one storytelling method. Okay, and I believe there are so many of them, but one simple story, if that's what you're trying to tell, is there's a hero, the hero, you know, is going about his life and he has some purpose. All of a sudden there's an issue, a problem, a, a, you know, a hurdle, a challenge. Um, and now they need to find a mentor or help somebody to get them to a solution. And that's where we step in as the service provider, as the business professional, now, together, we can solve this problem. In the case of Viva, let's say we can solve your email marketing problems and limitations and make it more advanced. We can even improve your automations if you have like drip campaigns and you want to go beyond email. So that's how we can solve how you communicate with your customers. Um, now, we have some obstacles we need to set up and do things. And that's the same with any business, by the way. When you're starting to work with them, there might be some challenges. But then you overcome it, you solve that problem, and then you live happily ever after. Right? That's the Pixar storytelling process. And if you're doing videos, approach that. You know, Think about how can I tell a story through these short form videos? Now, many start with an impressive hook. It could be, and I'm going to take Vibari example. Um, are your emails landing in spam? That could be just a, a strong hook. Um, and then you can begin the rest of the story by introducing the hero is saying, you know, John is, you know, works for John Drinkwater Incorporated. He services thousands of clients, but he has seen a drop in his sales because emails ended up in spam because Gmail and Yahoo changed their preferences. How can you solve this? Viba comes in and helps them along the way. All right. Okay. I feel like I'm doing too much self-promotion here, guys. Um, Steering to use a captivating story that drags your audience. And yeah, that's it for the storytelling technique. If you use something different, please let me know. I know there are too many frameworks for storytelling. And that's the one that I always remember through the Pixar videos and through my pitch uh, practices in the past, what I've tried to pitch to Vbout and other products. Uh, that I learned their storytelling is the best way to communicate with an audience. So Robert Madsen said, said story brand seven step framework. Yes, thank you for that, uh, Robert. I'll uh, drop it in the chat. George, just drop that in the chat to everybody as well. Let them Google the story brand seven step framework. Thank you. Good start with sure. the protagonist and antagonist approach. Yes, Leland, I agree. That's also another option. Um, Background music. We're going to talk about background music, guys. So I'm going to get to it, Gary, okay? Um, because there are some uses for it, unfortunately. 
to to drive more engagement. That is, that means we feel like we're pressured to add videos to our uh, to our content. All Richard, right. we have Wilbert uh, from Facebook. He said that he wants to share Facebook read. So I, I send it to you as well. Oh, sure. Um, I see it here, but I have also, uh, I have another one I'm going to start with. So I might ask you for the link again, okay? Um, Pierce, thank you. I uh, we, we get the sources through through a teamwork and obviously I, I, I tend to do things like my I, I geek out on listening to podcasts and interviews and what other companies are doing. So that always provides a nice repertoire of information for you. Uh, but thank you. All right, keep up with the trends. Music. <laughs> Music is a trend. So somebody releases a new audio and the audio is out and people are starting to, oh, I like this. Let me use it in my own reel. And all of a sudden, that little icon on the bottom right, you guys, you click on it. Everybody knows this one. You can save the audio. And you can use it, and you always see the original creator of the audio, right? So this is what we mean. Adding adding that um, audio, especially trending audio, into your present uh, your videos, will let you appear in when you click on this. So some people they will like the audio, they will click on the bottom right uh, icon, they will see all the other videos, and they start watching them to see what others have done on that trending video. So that's why adding audio could help your viewership because you become part of a specific sort of grouped uh, short, short forms. And um, it, it's all about visibility, okay? So do you need to add audio to your video? Probably not, but it does two things. In some cases, people might enjoy the background music and in others, it might be just part of another group of trending stuff. Uh, Carla said that you can tell if the audio is trending and there's a little arrow pointing up and to the right on the sound. Uh, yes, on which app that is, Carla? I'm not sure. But every one of the apps, they have trending. When you try to attach or search for music, they certainly cannot have some of the top ones, some of the new ones. They categorize them nicely. Instagram. 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 Okay, cool. There you go, guys. You can look for the for the arrow pointing uh, on the sound. <clears throat> so creators usually who are looking to optimize viewership, they try to find those videos, um, a trending voices or trending audio or trending types of videos to kind of do the same. Does it apply for businesses? Sometimes, guys, it's, it's a little challenging, right? Like if you are an attorney and the trending video is just a, I don't know, guy dancing in the mall, I mean, you need to get creative <laughs> or you can, you can make a fool out of yourself. So you have to be careful there. <laughs> All right, so monitoring filters. So here's, here's a breakdown, music and audio. Okay, that's the one I just discussed. If it's trending, maybe you should add it to your saved library. Visuals as well, meaning you know what people are doing in the video. Sometimes the types of backgrounds. Um, and then you have the filters. Filters are, everybody's aware, knows what filters are. You can also apply the same filter because it becomes parts of a group category of wheels. And filters usually show up depending on the app somewhere on the bottom that this person used this filter. If you click it, you can then use it in your own reel. Um, so with that being said, music groups your videos. The actual um, filter groups your video. And the algorithm of these tools like TikTok and YouTube and such, if you started to watch a lot of that one video of people dancing in the mall, eventually they, they'll start to suggest more of those videos to your feed, right? So understanding how those algorithm works a little bit can help you identify these trends. <clears throat> All right. Now, I personally also recommend, just like everything else, is trying to find people in your industry doing it and sort them by followers and by views and try to also adopt some of those patterns. As you know, most of creativity is a copy-paste process, making it your own. 
So you can do that. Just there's so much of that stuff out there already for any every single industry that I don't see why you cannot do it yourself. I mean, for God's sake, there's a guy that's farming ants. He has a farm ant. He has, I don't know, a million followers just because he talks about that all the time. So yes. <clears throat> Moving on, George, any questions on Facebook? Sorry, I don't want to ignore our viewers there. Uh, no, there's uh, only the link that Wilbert uh, sent, so I will resend it okay. for, for, from a Facebook reel. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, Richard, uh, Sihan was saying... Uh, no, sorry, not Sihan. Uh, Sihan, I will resend you the link, sorry. Uh, Anna, can you go back to last screen? Uh, what do you mean, Anna? Uh, the slide before this? This one? Maybe Anna's taking Sorry, a snapshot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Anna, there you go. And again, we're going to share those presentations and slides, so don't worry about missing out. Yes, Ihan, we'll send you the, the slides, and of course you can uh, retrieve them. Okay. Cool. Now, we have to talk about e-commerce, and this is I'm not talking about live shops or even though these are amazing, but look how creative this video is, right? I just want you to, you know, watch it because it doesn't really take a lot. Let me uh, move to it real quick. Sorry, guys, here we go. So if you're selling a product, whether you build the product and design it yourself or whether you are a reseller in, you know, whatever capacity, um, this is a very low production video. I mean, let's watch it together. Interesting. Very, very nice. I love that they're lightweight. And also it's insulated. Even just touching it, I'm like, oh, this is soft. This is like a pillow. The tread is really good. Quite grippy. I love the gum sole and fully waterproof. I would wear this with anything. Kind of like an everyday boot. The sneaker is already cozy. This is like walking on a cloud. Super comfortable. It's Crazy. Oh my gosh. I really like how the water is just beating right off. They're definitely waterproof. <laughs> All right. So, uh, guys, this is very basic video. Low production. Small cuts. Obviously, somebody designed the storyboard of what they want in shot one, shot two. Um, by the way, George, I can hear a lot of the background noise. Do you mind muting? Sorry. Thanks. So you can see shot one, two, three, and so on. And, and the camera is shaky. There's two angles to the camera. Sometimes they zoom in, sometimes they zoom out. But it's a very simple, less than one minute, and it tells a story about the boot. It's a, a bigger type boot that's waterproof and what other kind of proof that is. Um, and it communicates the story. There was caption on top, because that's important. And it got... A lot of engagement. I don't know how many views that that got. Let's see. Um, George, how can okay? So this is thirteen hundred likes. That's a quite uh, a lot of engagement. And I, I honestly, I love looking at the comments. <laughs> Sometimes the comments are super funny. Uh, but furthermore, what's really interesting is that you can use the comment to identify interest. Okay, this, this is really key. Researchers are actually using this model. And I forgot there was this story about um, somebody did a video on, uh, I think a little, little study that was done and asked people to comment on YouTube. And there were thousands of comments. And somebody literally just took all those comments, fed them to chat GPT. Or right now you have Google Gemini Advanced that's gonna even equally as good. And said, can you please give me a market analysis on this topic based on the on the people's feedback? I mean, this is hundreds of thousands of dollars in research money that now you can gather from, from comments. So engage and let people kind of comment, tell them in some cases you can, um, you know, please leave us in the comment what you're wearing or what you're doing or what your uh, preferences are because that will help you in identifying interest. All right. <clears throat> cool. So this is kind of showcasing your product. It's definitely nothing new, but um, 
don't overthink it because we call, we fall into this analysis paralysis sort of thing where we're like, I don't know what to post and I need this massive production and I don't have the money for it. Nope. If you see this video, I trust me, you can you can do it. All right, so showing them how the product work in action, highlighting your products and services, benefits, custom reviews, and show the most out of your features within a few seconds of viewing time. So immediately jumped into um, into either why you use the product. It took less than 60 seconds. Now, leveraging UGC, user-generated content, that means your customers using the product and how you encourage this is really a on you, you, you know, some people incentivize, some people just, you know, create this cool kind of culture and community where people feel compelled to post. And some people want to jump on a trend. So you created a trend and now they want to follow it and they could kind of start to post things like this. This is an example by Puma using their user-generated content on their own channel, okay? And obviously you can tell why. Um, so not only they got followers, the person who posted this, but it's pretty cool. The community is more excited. Hi, hello. We're twins. We're twins. Yes, sir. I am me. She is she. Except when I pretend I'm her. And when we switch, you can't tell which is which. All right. So th that's very simple, right? Um, so they use somebody, which is this. And let's see how many followers this person got. Thirty-seven thousand. Now I'm not saying that's the only video. Why? I'm pretty sure they have some other value, but I can guarantee you, a few thousands of these came because of the mention from Puma. Okay, so if that video has received um, how many views this has? Two hundred thirty-four comments. I can't see the views, but user-generated content is definitely powerful because it excites your own customers to post, and you know, jump in on the trend. And they're creating content for you. So your cost is zero. <laughs> Anyways, Carla, thank you for joining. No problem. We're going to be sharing that content with you, okay? Um, so we have UGC have been several have been for several years, but became also an important strategy for short videos. Absolutely. It consists of showing the actual experience with your product. So it's nothing too crazy how others are using it, how they're happy with it. Kind of a case study framework here. And it simulates the trust with your customers. If your customers are taking the time to record a video and post it, that means you're doing something right. All right? Cool. And George, was it Carla that shared her video? Am I like, um, are we? Yes. yes. I will. Yeah, yeah. I will send you the, the link. Carla, you're still there? Can you have a second? No, she left. She left. Okay. She left. All right, we'll, we'll still watch the video. I don't think, why not? We'll get the recording back to her. But let's continue before I uh, get to that part. Um, we have mastered the art of thumbnails. And I can't say that I mastered the art of thumbnails, you guys, but I did notice before I do that, I was getting almost, you know, a couple of 10, 20 views. And then all of a sudden it jumped to 100, couple of hundreds, and it keeps going. Um, so, you know, kind of thumbnails don't have to be anything crazy. I usually take my own selfies using uh, my camera. I use a background remover. And then I just have a folder called Headshots with all my silly faces and stuff, which I add on top of thumbnails. And I use Canva, so I'm not using anything too uh, fancy here, okay? And follow the same format. People like to see a uniform way of like your board doesn't look all crazy. Um, obviously, if you have guests and you're interviewing, you might want to put the pictures of your guests, but people like to see people, okay? They don't want just a, like a basic headshot. They want to see real life things. That's why mixing a little bit of the virtual with the, with the real could be a good combo for thumbnails. And if you like Mr. Beast, I think he has like a whole video where he talks about, he spent millions of dollars optimizing his thumbnails to the point that they got it to a perfect formula to get the best views. So if you go to Mr. B's page and look at his thumbnails, this is the guy that actually figured out the science of thumbnails, okay? Um, so it boosts, you know, the clicks and the views because as people browsing hundreds of videos, they wanna, you wanna get their attention. 
And you want to show the face. Again, that's kind of relatable. Finally, 90% of performing videos have thumbnails. Uh, the best performing videos, they do have custom-made thumbnails to be specific. Um, and not only that, you can set up thumbnails for Reels and TikToks. And I, I use Canva. Canva has pre-formatted like a thumbnail size so you can design the same exact thing. I just move it around. So I can take this, put it in the middle, move my face, shrink this down, et cetera. All right. It's really not as much work as you would, you would think. Um, all right. So George, can you look up Mr. Beast YouTube page and just put in the link for Richard S? He's asking sure. for that. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much. You're, you're Engaging with your followers. I mentioned this before is that <clears throat> incentivizing comments and requesting comments gracefully could be a good way for people to engage. When people actually leave comments, your video gets more interest and gets suggested to other people. You will start showing up on the feed of those that commented even more often. So I really uh, think you should be encouraging comments that people participate, provide value. Everybody brings a unique perspective to things and you want to Pull, pull that perspective out of your audience if you can. They're happy to give it. Why not take it? Responding to your comments, I'll just leave them stale. Um, I mean, obviously, if you get to a point where you have thousands of comments, you can't keep up. You hire somebody, but uh, in essence, try to answer. People appreciate when you take the time to answer your questions. And Andrew Huberman does this. He answers most of his questions most of the time, even though he have millions of followerships. So if he can do it, most of you can. So that boosts the visibility, as I said, and the algorithm loves this. The more engaged people are with your video, the more it gets suggested. And that doesn't only apply for reels, but there's this thing about reels where there's instant kind of feedback. There's a like, there's a thumbs up, there's a smiley, sad face, there's a comment, there's... People are, are engaging a lot faster and you want to incentivize that. All right, so optimizing your video. SEO is not only for blogs, but also for videos, and there are ways you can improve that. Every tool has a different ways to do it. YouTube is pretty good at it. Not only you can have hashtags and such, um, but try to find the right title for your video. You can look up other trending videos and follow that trend, or you can kind of create or add your own relatable um, keywords. Not to mention hashtags is a thing in videos. YouTube allows you to create chapters as well so people can navigate to it. And there are some tools that you can have the actual link. So you can summarize and it gives you, okay, on that minute in the video, this is the conversation. But when it comes to short videos, um, I'm not sure how much that's required because it's 60 seconds, but at least focus on the title, on the hashtags, keywords, and um, I think you can cross, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yes, it could be included in duets or stitches in case of uh, TikTok, and I think there's a privacy setting in Instagram. So if you want to make your video visible to the masses, just look at those basic settings and allow, the, allow them to be included um, in all of these, okay? Hashtags, just like everywhere else, you want to use trending hashtags and people search by hashtags. It's actually a feature in every single tool where you can look up a keyword and you can, you can click a filter of the hashtag, okay? So that's for optimizing your video. Um, and there's one part, which is the transcript. I think you sh should probably know most of these tools that have built-in auto automatic CC or caption, closed caption, or transcript. If you want to control it yourself, it might be worth downloading an app that lets you do it. Or if you're using a video recording app, some of them offers the, the caption baked in, into it. But because people are muted by default and maybe they're scrolling at work or on the bus uh, with that headsets, it's just muted. So you want to provide those closed captions, okay? Cool. So be humorous in the sense of, you know, don't make a fool out of yourself or be a clown, but funny videos or humor of any sort tends to get more engagement on TikTok. It's just the way it is. Um, 
and I'm referring to TikTok because they actually made a little kind of uh, study on this where users are 1.4% 1.4x times likely to purchase a product if the sponsored video is humorous. So this is paid on there based on their sponsored ads. And humor generates positive emotions for the brand because when you laugh at somebody's words, you're establishing a bond and trust. That's just simple human behavior. And try to use offensive content or um, I would say uh, don't side with one party versus the other if you're that's the case because you don't know who's your audience. You might lose a big chunk of your audience because you talked about this uh, party versus the right versus the left or whatever it is. Okay, so be neutral if you want to kind of not offend anyone. Um, I mean, some people take a stand and they support this and that, and I, I'm all for, for it. But if you want to get them, you want to be neutral, it's also a strategy. That's actually my strategy. I keep my opinions and thoughts to myself um, because honestly, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares about <laughs> your opinion or mine. So with that being said, your thoughts are yours. All right. We're getting close to the end of this, guys. We got it, including a CTA. <clears throat> um, helps. What people need to do next at the end of your video, where to buy it. You know, you can include a little caption of the website or, you know, kind of like, comment, whatever it is, have a CTA. Um, and this is sort of like the content type consumers want from brands on social. Uh, the 30% who want link to more information, and I think this is focused on paid ads. Graphics and images, 18%. Produce videos, texts, and uh, produce edited photos. So photos, unfortunately, don't win in this category. Um, and that's what they're expecting from brands. There's more information, more graphics, and more produced videos. All right, so I, I'm a big kind of believer in not overstuffing, overselling. So if you want to include your CTA, whether you want to do it at the end or you want to do it in the middle, just kind of test it out. And I believe that A-B testing is the only way to go. Some people, they upload the same video over and over and they include the CTA in different parts of it. If you have that luxury of time to do it, by all means. <clears throat> all right, um, the CTA can redirect viewers to your landing page website, product, or if you have already shoppables inside your own Instagram or um, TikTok, you can actually send them directly there. You can cross post your video, taking videos like this, breaking it down to shorts, the best and easiest way to do it. And everybody here is expert at something. So if you know what you need to talk about and you already have a long segment about it, just take that, cut it up, use some of the tools we mentioned. And honestly, I mean, that's going to save you tons of time, not only for you, for your team. And all of a sudden, a 30-minute video turns into 15 short videos. 15. That means you can post two a day, right? If you push one piece of content a week, one 30-minute interview, presentation, talk about something, break it down into 15, then that's plenty of content. All right, not to mention there are some things you can standardize what hashtags you use across the board so you don't have to figure out what hashtag on YouTube. Um, I personally don't use different hashtags on different channels. Uh, I tend to use the same. It's just less work and I believe the trends sometimes tend to be universal. Even those on LinkedIn, you might find some trendy words li li lightly different than others. Um, Now, I know not these videos don't necessarily support links directly. So some people put it in the bio um, when it comes to like Instagram. Instagram. So they're constantly ch changing that. Uh, they now added in the stories the ability to add a link. So there's a hyperlink caption that you can add and people can swipe up to follow. So that's good. Uh, other channels are not allowing external clicks unless you're advertising. So... That's a challenge, okay? You can put it in the caption, fine. If people really want to follow, then they will find that link. And YouTube shorts are quite limited. 
Um, that's why it's still the most challenging, but it gets you a lot of views. And finally, I mean, some people, they cannot um, produce content a lot. So they download, like, let's say their TikTok. They just share it on uh, X and LinkedIn since the video can be saved with music. Um, Instagram, I don't think it lets you download the music. They keep it within their ecosystem. Uh, but TikTok, you can. But it's debatable because tic Twitter, I think, has a 30-second limit. I don't know if now they're paywalling everything. Um, but the Twitter format and also LinkedIn is not the same as as uh, the 8 by 16 ratio or 9 16, right? So you have to be mindful of that. All right, so let's go ahead and play those two videos. And too bad we lost Carla. If you're watching this, Carla, after, as I promised you, I'm going to play your video. We're going to look at the elements because she said that she got millions of views. So let's look at this together. All right, so she got 6,909 likes. All right. John and Bacon. When I see a young, a young mom wiping the handle of a shopping cart with disinfectant wipes and putting her toddler, it legit makes me sad. Just watching her, I know she does everything in her power to keep him safe. Enough to buy her first. Okay. That's interesting. You can see, guys, the level of production is just a still camera. It's a human and a beautiful background. Just capitalized on the the nature um, affectionado. Some people look up nature shots, inspirations. Um, and she's talking about something more scientific. I'm assuming because, um, you know, she's talking about chemicals of, you know, wiping out the stuff might be releasing chemicals into the baby's skin and also chemicals might uh, or wipes might be killing the actual good bacteria so there's you can see her caption right here okay that's awesome very simple look at all of these so now if i am to um, look up non-toxic cleaning in the hashtag i bet you this video can be filtered out because there's likes and there are viewership to it all right so very nice video. Uh, maybe we should follow. I'll follow you right here. There you go. So let's look at the profile real quick. I think you can go to Reels. You can see a little bit of the viewership. So she got about 3,000 on each video. This one got 3.1 million. 3.1 million. <laughs> one video, right? You can see the cons inconsistencies of... Uh, the algorithm, you cannot really think that you know <laughs> because everything else is averaging about 2,000 to three, but all of a sudden that one video uh, pushed her up to three million. And I'm pretty sure she was looking at this and saying, wow, <laughs> 3.1 million. Um, all right, cool. Let's look at the second one and then we'll close up with the final examples from big brands. <laughs> Okay, so this is not the video from the other gentleman. I'm sorry. This is Mr. Beast's page. Yes. Uh, one, one second. Okay, so this is Mr. Beast's page, you guys. So you can look at his thumbnails. So this, these are his thumbnails, right? Very basic. His shorts don't have thumbnails. His shorts are just like basic stuff. Okay. So if you want to follow a framework, just look at this. I sent the the video of Wilbert. Okay, thank you, George. Mark. This is the video, George. Yes, did you click on the last one? I believe so. So it's still image. All right, um, when it's Aaron Aponte. So maybe it's a trying to self-promotion here. Uh, no problem, you guys. But we're talking about short form videos. That's one of them. Um, all right, moving on to the last segment. And if you're still with us, thank you so much. We spilled a little bit over. This is an awesome topic. 
if you're still here, um, I have 44 participants. Wow. Thank you, guys. So here are some businesses effectively using their channels. And if you look at the kind of state of commercials, and I know now with the Super Bowl happened that on the weekend, I mean, companies are spending an average, I think, of $7 million on a seven um, on a 30-second commercial, I believe. Hopefully, I'm not wrong on this one. But they're getting 100 million viewers, 140 million viewers, I believe, was the estimated people who tuned in in a very short period of time. Other than this, TV commercials have just plummeted over the last few years. And the reason why is the average channel gets about 3.5 million viewerships in some of their top, I believe, um, like peak times. So if you have 3.5 million viewers in your peak time and you're charging half a million bucks for that 30 second TV slot, I mean, look at Netflix. They take segments from their videos, which require very little to no production, extra production, and they are getting, you know, 200,000 views, 2.6 million, 1.5 million. Why would I ever advertise? Okay. So Netflix have figured out if I retake our existing programs, repurpose that content, we can literally drive so much engagement to our videos and eyeballs to our brand. That's it. Very simple strategy with 37 million followers. TikTok has really set the bar high and is, is just, um, you know, a way to see how they capitalize on the viewership to save money and get more engagement. So they are small cuts from their videos and they have behind the scenes sometimes, which people seem to like. The other one is Oreo. Oreo, another brand, which by the way, it's poison. If you like Oreo, sorry to tell you, but the ingredients in Oreo, uh, I probably um, will never put bring it to the house ever. Uh, but they've done a great when it comes to branding, uh, they have 3.6 million followers. They're constantly pushing like recipes and um, just funny clips as well. Let me see if I have it open. I think I had it open. So they have a team, obviously, that are constantly pushing content. Let me just uh, get there. There we go. Some of these content are videos like this one um, for the holidays. All right, that looks good. It probably um, it looks like a truck of diabetes, but everything else is just produced by their team and they're not high production. Little caption, little intro, shaky camera. So there's no high, you know, expensive uh, gears here. Decent lighting for sure, which is not hard to get. And I personally have this, which sometimes blinds me, but that's the best uh, $20 investment I've made or 30. And that's it, All right? So they were able to capitalize on this as a brand. The rest of their videos, I highly encourage you to check them out. Just don't buy Aurea. <laughs> cool. Couple more brands, Audi is great. Um, when it comes to their viewership, they have uh, 1.1 million followers on Facebook and 3.8 on Instagram. Uh, Audi Denmark built awareness among their potential buyers using sponsored reels and Facebook as well. Sorry about this. So let's look at their channel real quick to understand what they post. All right, so this is their Facebook page and Facebook have their own sort of uh, branded pages now for businesses. Um, I would have liked their Facebook page. You can definitely search it yourself. Sorry, I didn't have this handy. Now, Emirates Airlines is another brand. They spend a lot of money and a lot of production into social media. They have almost a million followers, but Emirates Airlines is, you know, the brand itself, you know, in, in, in the travel space, um, the viewership narrows, right? The, the more niche you become as 
a service uh, less followers you might have, but with almost a million subscribers on uh, YouTube, they diversify the videos. Obviously they have videos of cities, planes, the team. And these are the three pillars, by the way, if you have, want to follow a posting framework, some companies do this. They have one, they talk about solving the problem. That's one pillar, how they solve the problem, companies that came in and solved the problem using their solution. Then they talk about the team, the culture, the uh, the founders, and that's the second pillar. And then the third pillar is their customers, you know, life values, general information, holidays, that type of stuff. Um, so they, they do pretty pretty good when it comes to their content. Um, let's look at their YouTube. Afternoon, everyone. This is your captain speaking. Take a moment to look outside your window. So this is a video. Definitely this one requires some form of production. But with all the apps available, I don't see how this can be difficult. Uh, let's look at their actual page. So these are their shorts. You see how they put people in almost every single one of them? And their regular videos are, okay. The headshots have no caption or the thumbnails. Awesome. Cool. And I'm only doing this so we can learn a little bit from brands who figured it out, right? We're not an Emirates per se or an Oreo brand, but um, we can learn a lot from what they figured out. All right, so uh, the last thing here is Shopify. Shopify obviously have a dedicated team for this stuff um, and they they do great. With 220,000 followers on TikTok, which is a decent sized followers, it's a business B2B. And with that being said, it starts to narrow them, right? They're talking in businesses. They diversify using different formats. So you can see here, some include people, some do not. And the topics are consistent to resonate with entrepreneurs and business owners. So they stuck to the same theme of what their company provides, their culture, and so on. And let's look at their TikTok so we can end with that. All right, always people, or the majority of them, which is great. Uh, 222,000 followers. All right, and you can see the videos are averaging, wow, this is 8.6 million. Just funny. And I know there's a company that actually do testing when they take the same video and they post it six, seven times throughout the day. And one of them just starts to kind of trend and it's the same exact video, no difference. They figured out is just once it starts to trend by people engaging with it at its particular time, that creates um, an explosive effect with that particular content. Anyways, so that's for Shopify. And you have Intel, which we all know, especially now with everything AI, and they have a lot of their content on their no, new microchips and language model uh, design chips. 1.7 million followers on Instagram. They did a great job to communicate their brand story and their achievements, okay? Using Reels. So this is a complicated industry, right? It's not simple to talk about microchips. <laughs> I mean, most of us, every single one of us have it on computer or their phone or whatever. But if you tell any of us to explain what a microchip is, I can guarantee you, you're not, we're not gonna be able to articulate it well. So with that being said, I highly encourage you to check out their uh, their page and understand how they're leveraging short form videos at that. All right. So we can stop here. I want to thank everybody again who joined us today. I know it went a little bit over, but honestly, this topic can be dear to many of you. Um, short form videos are probably one of the most cost effective and most promising channels that you can bring to your business for visibility. Okay. People are using it not only to build their brand, brand awareness, but also to validate ideas, products before they hit the market. Okay. If you're getting engagement on a product before you ship a thousand pieces of that product, so many people like it. Now you can purchase a thousand units and resell those units if you're in e commerce. Um, you know, if you are shipping software, 
you can create short form videos and draft people to sign up to a beta and see how much engagement that gets. So I think there's a big value for you as a business. Highly encourage you to start somewhere. Do not get discouraged if you don't find the viewership that you're looking for. Because you never know. You can have a thousand viewers today and 4.5 million a couple of days later, just like we saw in, um, I think, Carla's example. So I can take final questions. And please, guys, don't forget, if you are looking for a marketing platform, VBout can help. Particularly if you have email marketing and automation needs that are advanced and you want to simplify things and personalize for your customers, reach out to us. I'll drop in a link for a demo in the chat. You can speak to our specialist to see if we are the right fit. Awesome. Um, any questions, you guys? Chaplin said there's still a very simple 3D scene, so it's actually inspiring. Yes, we talked about, I think that was... Uh, uh, Intel. Okay. Learning by edge of my seat, listening to such good lecture. Thank you, Dimitri. Hopefully it was valuable and the feedback was you learned something today. Um, Sihan, absolutely. Thank you for joining. I'm loving that you're loving the content. Uh, big credits to George and the team for putting this together. You're welcome, uh, so Cool. Chaplin is asking any updates on our AI power chatbot. Yes, every day I, I just that's the first thing I check with my team. We might have a first release next week. This week they're working on the analytics to understand the conversations where they're coming from. So we are um, we are not too far out from having the first release. So just hang in there. Uh, thanks for asking, Gary. Thank you, and as well. Um, yes. All right. So, George, no questions on Facebook. We can wrap this up. Yes, Richard. I just thanked Wilbert for sending over the video. And he said, yes, it was a steady profile. So, it was the right link. All right. So, again, you guys, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for joining an hour and 30 minutes of content. That's a lot. That means you're committed to learning. That means you're going to do something great very soon. And with that, we can finish the session. See you next month on an awesome topic, as well as our partner meeting. If you're using VBout, we meet once a month at the end of the month to talk about the latest releases. So with that, thank you, everyone. And I'll see you on our next meetup. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.